Have you been in a car accident recently? Is your vehicle a total loss? Are you not at fault? Did the other guy run a red light and now you're just left whipless? Are you now suddenly realizing you are nothing without your vehicle? Hi, I'm Beanie Buddies, AKA Danny, AKA Danny Phantom. I also go by my rap stage name, Zanny Phantom. I also go by my stand-up comedian name, Xanthem, also known as Xanthem Gum. And I'm here to share my experience with my most recent car accident, my one and only car accident, at least for now. Because I intend to share some information that might be helping you and anyone else who has been in a car accident and doesn't know how to go from there, as it is a pretty scary and sketchy experience if you don't play it right. But first things first, come here, come here, let me hold you. It's okay. I know getting in a car accident is a pretty heavy thing, but the important thing is that you're safe. So I just got into my very first big car accident. Exciting, I know, I'm, I'm pretty hyped about it too. This resulted in the total loss of my vehicle and a few insurance agents fighting to the death on my behalf. So I thought, why not? Let's roll out the big screen and share my newly found experience to see if I could help anyone out there who might be going through a very similar predicament as this. I do want to keep this short and clean. We got to meet deadlines once a week from here on out. I've been good the past couple months, so a promise is a promise. I'll try to sum this up in three chapters. Chapter one would be the accident. Pretty self-explanatory there. Chapter two, the aftermath. That chapter will be going over more phone calls and emails and the parts everyone hates talking to the insurance agents. And then chapter three will just be an epilogue wrapping up the loose ends that we might have there. But overall, this is a completed arc, at least from my point of view. And we do have a bit of a happy ending, so I can't complain. So here's the story. I was driving down the street, doing my thing, sitting pretty, nothing out of the ordinary. When I approach this intersection, it is a green light for me. So. I went and I did get across about 80% of the street when all of a sudden from the corner of my eye I see this black Honda CRV going at what seems like light speed past me and wham I collided with him. This man was going light speed running a red light and I intercepted him causing me to hit the back of his car near the wheel a little bit. As soon as we collided the airbag went off for me it felt like a giant textbook just punched me in the face. His vehicle proceeded to spin out of control sending him flying to hit another vehicle and a bit of property damage as he hit the door of some building. <laughs> Once the airbag was deflated, I looked at my ignition, tried to turn the keys and realized, huh, my car is off. I got out of the car, went over to the front and noticed a new tiny little scratch that was caused by this collision that may be preventing my car from turning off. I did a quick body inspection to make sure all limbs were still attached. No cuts, no bruises, no broken bones. That is a successful car crash in my opinion. If you collided with another vehicle and it was nasty and the airbags go off and all that and you come out of it unscathed, congratulations, you are the real winner here. Not too many folks can say the same thing, so consider yourself lucky and be grateful. These things can be easily replaceable and fixed. A human life, however, not so easily is replaceable. Once I made sure I was okay, I headed over to the other vehicle to make sure he was okay. Before we exchanged IDs, info, any type of insurance extravaganza, I wanted to make sure he was physically fine and that there was no grave injuries and that there was no blood, broken bones, things of that nature. Again, these things are replaceable, these things not so much. But let me tell you, this man was the most uncooperative man I could have ever collided with. <laughs> he did not want to give me no information, no ID, no name, no insurance card, nada. To be frank, uh, there was some unclarity on who was driving the car, as when I first got out of my vehicle, many people were telling me that this guy was the driver. But this guy proceeded to just walk away and pretend to be on the phone. So this was the man that I was dealing with. I was knocking on the window. Just trying to see if he was okay. Nothing. He didn't want to talk to me. Thankfully, there was a lot of witnesses around that did call 911. Authorities showed up, the fire department, even tow trucks, ambulances, the whole, the whole cavalry came. I gathered a bunch of witnesses' phone numbers to provide that for my insurance later on. We'll go into that in chapter two. Once the police arrived, they got my side of the story. They got his side of the story. They gathered some intel from the witnesses, towed our cars. It was over in about 30 minutes. Chapter two, the insurances. As soon as I got home, called my insurance, I let them know, yo, my B, I kinda got into an accident. 
They were very helpful. They connected me to the people to speak to. They wanted a statement from me. They wanted to know if I had any photos or videos or phone numbers of witnesses that were at the scene that could testify for me. I gave them all that jazz. Since my vehicle was towed from the scene, I had to go to the place where it was towed, which was an impound lot. I had to go to the tow yard and let them know that I authorized my insurance provider to come take a look at the vehicle and come take the vehicle if need be. Needless to say, the appraiser in my case found my vehicle a total loss. There was no way they were gonna repair this thing, which I kinda get to 2005 Honda Accord. I was even surprised that the airbags went off, to be honest with you. So once the vehicle was deemed a total loss, they let me know, yo, retrieve all your personal belongings from that vehicle, leave the key in the car, we'll come by and appraise it, and we'll give you a total value of what we think your car is worth to pay you out. In my head, I thought, sweet, I'm gonna get paid out here. I started praying that maybe I'd get paid out more than I paid for the vehicle, which we will reveal that information later. Good news, by the way. During this time, I received a call from the other person's insurance agent, and they wanted to get a statement from me, and they wanted me to provide photos and videos as well, too. They wanted to hear my side of the story. Now, here's the part I wanna give some special tips and tricks for. After I got off the phone with the other person's agent, I let my agent know what just happened regarding him calling me, and my agent told me, hey, Next time that happens, just advise them over to me. You don't have to speak to him. You don't have to give him any information. If anything, the information you just gave him, he's gonna try to manipulate that and try to make it fit some sort of narrative that puts you in the wrong. So I immediately felt like an idiot after speaking to the ops. When the perpetrator's insurance agent calls you for information, all you have to do is just refer him to your agent. About a week went by and my appraiser finally got to the vehicle where it was in the impound still. And he let me know we are gonna be able to pay you out in what we think this car is worth. I thought, oh my goodness, I have catalytic converter problems. I have problems with my engine. My transmission is a little shitty. They're gonna give me like 2000 bucks. Holy shit, these guys are very generous. Thank you Allstate. I'm gonna let you know right now, I did not pay nearly this amount for the vehicle. <laughs> so I'm very grateful. I'm considering this entire experience to be a blessing in disguise. And for that week that this whole phone calls and emails and signing off on electronic signatures was going on, I got a pretty rad fucking rental vehicle if I do say so myself. I chose this baby blue Chevy Spark boy. What do you mean? Look at that thing. That is sauce. I was starting to think, man, maybe I should get into a car accident more often, huh? And thus this leads us to chapter three, epilogue. Once this was all wrapped up and payouts were commenced, I suddenly realized these car accidents aren't so bad when no one is injured, of course. They're fairly common in the United States and unfortunately a lot of them do lead to fatal accidents. So maybe this is just my extreme gratitude talking, but from what it looks like it could have been a lot worse and I'm just very happy at the end of the day to come out of this unscratched. Literally no bruises on me or cuts whatsoever. I had a little sore and stiff neck for maybe two to three days, but I was told that that's gonna be a given. My entire body felt like I just fought Shao Kahn for two rounds, but honestly, I'm okay with that. The insurance agents handled everything. I was not at fault. I got paid out. I get to shop for a new vehicle, one that I'll know to inspect the catalytic converter on so I don't end up with the same bucket as before. All is well. No one is injured. The other guy is fine too. After about a week and a half of electronically signing things, sending over a title, calling some insurance agents, watching them fight to the death over who's liable and who's not in my claim, it got me thinking that things can be a lot worse. So if you get into a car accident, don't panic, don't start screaming, don't start getting emotional. It's fine. These things are easily replaceable. These are toys. These things can be broken down and rebuilt. Of course at a cost, but as long as you're okay physically and you have no damage done to you or to the person you collided with whatsoever, hey man, you're good. <laughs> it could be a lot worse. You'll get another car. There'll never be another you.